front of you a copy. This is something that John Pandolfo started in Barry about a, six, eight months ago, and he told me the idea back in June that all the board chairs and the principals, in case the superintendent isn't around, it's not that I would have this all on top of my head either, um, have a copy of open meeting law in front of them, mm -hmm. laminated. So if there's a question about process for the board, you have it in front of you, and you can just keep that with you and your... And the second sheet has the seven exemptions for why you would go into an executive session. Got it. Okay. okay. So just keep it in the binder if you need it. Yeah. You've got it, and you can use that in your motions for stating why you would go into executive session. I think our board That's chair good. should have that memorized, and we should give him. I'm going to give me a test. Uh, yeah. uh, proficiency test. No, no, that's just a little cruel. That's why we gave the handouts. I thought when John told me that in June, I was like, oh, I think to be fair, yeah. if you really want to go down that road, every board member should know all of those. Yeah. <laughs> so, just wanted to, yeah. trying to, when I hear yeah. ways to help the support the boards better, I try to do it. I'm just saying. Well, you could decree that here. Yeah, you just sign it. <laughs> yeah. No, I think this is a good idea, actually. I think. Yeah, it's John's idea. I want to give all credit to where credit's due. I think it was a great idea by Best Mr. Pandolfo. Sense. An East Montpelier resident that he is. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. It's a type of crowd. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Um, we are at the consent agenda. 2.1, approved minutes of 6, 6, 18, 6, 13, 18, 6, 14, 18, and 8, 2, 18. Start on page two. I would make a motion to accept the minutes of June 6th, June 13th, June 14th, and August 2nd as a sleep. I'll second it. Are there any, is there any discussion of the minutes as presented? I I was not at the 614 meeting. Does it matter? I was going to abstain on the, just that one, but it or can I matter. just? It, it doesn't does matter. Not I matter. can just. Okay, so you never mind. I can always approve minutes even though you're not there. Okay, I did read them. So. I did see anything. Yeah, I'm not seeing or hearing any discussion. All of those in favor of approving them as presented, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstain. Thanks. Uh, discussion agenda, Act 46. Yeah. We had our meeting on the, in front of the State Board of Education, and they, you guys probably read articles on the paper. Yeah, so far, they look favorable. Mm -hmm. As far as the meeting, when uh, Scott, Matt, and myself uh, presented to a pretty full room, uh, Bill was there support to to a pretty full room of uh, their the capacity is 100 and they had to ask some people to leave from other towns so that we could all be there <laughs> all of the you know uh, I, w I don't know except I don't I didn't see the list but you know most of the people are similar to our last at 46 meeting but there were a lot more people than than before uh, I think it when I felt like we were well represented uh, we went back and forth eh, over the weeks on what to say and who to go first and mm -hmm. what to do. Eh, John eh, Brainbent did a video. Happy to forward it to you guys. Okay. Also, Orca has a video if you guys are curious about that. And now, in essence, so I, I gave, a, I, I started. I originally didn't want to start because I wanted Matt as the chair to start, but we went back and forth, back and forth. Eh, and I mostly just said, eh, you know, more about, you know, trying to appeal to their humanity <laughs> kind mm -hmm. of thing. And then uh, Scott and uh, Matt uh, were more concentrated on the debt issue. Janet Ansel was there too, and we handed the chair uh, uh, original letter of the one she submitted to them, and not just in our, you know, in all the town's behalf. Um, we, you know, we gave them the, we submitted the written response that everybody had uh, approved. And as far as uh, I don't know, Bill, I felt it went. I felt it went well. I felt it went well. Uh, I'm who are always asking people to watch their their behavior and mm -hmm. you know, like what they put. I I had a little bit of a hard time on because Scott and I had 
sort of rehearsed and we all had gone through what they were going to say and Scott came to the meeting without her, his page but a different blue mm -hmm. note so oh, he started he started really really good and then towards the end it was just you know it was a little it was a little hard but you know it's just it's the nature of being in a meeting I just I mostly read because I didn't want to get of course <laughs> yeah. but I think if you've read the articles it mm -hmm. seems like both the Dan French and uh, John they were both listed. I know who you mean. I can't think of his last name. John Eckett Carr, I think. Yeah, and I did. He asked us a very interesting question, and I originally felt like we didn't totally mm -hmm. respond it right. Matt did good respond, but we didn't. He was asking what was the difference between that first district that that he presented and us, and you know, they also had debt issues, and and it was it, you know it was good. We were able to talk to him a little bit after. So one of the, the other presenters had one of the a similar other. situation? Yeah, the first one. So they, the past two board meetings, now I'm sure they're yeah. third, they brought in districts that emerged. Mm -hmm. right. And so there was a comparison between Addison Central and Washington Central. And, you know, they had some... Between us and... Addison, Addison Central and Brown, Central, Mel, yeah. Brown Middle Prairie. Yeah, very yeah. similar, I yeah, would right. say. And I, yeah, think that was the right, I think that was the right characteristic. I think they are. I think we... Actually, I know because Peter and I have talked about mm -hmm. what they've gone through and what their debt loads were and all that. And it is very similar. It's almost it's uncanny how similar it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but but what was different from what is different from them is that they didn't even had so they have had to do more of the systems. So we have some we of the systems, systems in place, right? That we have. Everybody has the same uses the same computers. Everybody, in theory, we're all into one mm -hmm. common five years we have a little yeah. booklet so that we're not like completely on the same page but they hadn't they didn't have that mm -hmm. at, at all yet so it's it, it has been a little bit easier so for Peter down now the road of cooperating and collaborating maybe than they yeah. were yeah so and, and one thing that I think Matt used to write quote and it was on the paper too is that sometimes people can not eat you know you can have all the systems you want but people can also eat systems away right so if you don't have that buy-in and in, in any case, we were trying to make our case. So mm -hmm. regardless of how East Montpelier yeah, felt, I feel like well, we try to separate ourselves a little bit and say, you know, this is, please approve our alternative, <laughs> right? <laughs> With, uh, I mean, I think ultimately that's, that's the rub, right? Mm -hmm. Is that there are districts who not only aren't bought in, but are pretty dug in against. Yes. So, so at this and we've done a lot of work to bridge those gaps. So the danger is that if we get glommed together, then all of that goodwill will go away, and it'll end up being everybody negative. Everybody in their corner traction. again, <laughs> digging right. their heel. But maybe not. But yeah. so hmm. we are pretty much at their mercy right now. Yeah. Maybe. So uh, I don't. I, I just want to ask you know what what we think the next steps are. We don't can I merge now, so the executive we, committee report with this? So the yeah, executive so. committee met last week. So we've taken two steps. One, we've authorized the board chair and the superintendent to outreach to Twinfield to begin discussions with them about the possibility of um, the to to initiate discussions. Mm -hmm about um, merger with Twinfield. Um, and it, so it's, it's a preliminary just to be, lay the groundwork. Um, so if they're interested, it, we can have discussions about is that something we want to do or not. Um, they bring, what was it, 150 high school students? Um, 500 ADM. So it could, it could make a significant impact if we added 150 students to U32. Because they would look at Twinfield now, not as a... They've already told us in a meeting that they would be willing, they're not willing, they're willing to, to talk about changing their structure. They told us that last year, almost a year ago, they told us that. They, year, no, they, told us that. they said, we're even willing to talk about closing our high school. Hmm. I just find it interesting <clears throat> if yeah. we, 
six schools can't come together. Mm -hmm. How we bring some as another board. Well, let, no, let, no, me, let me finish yes. with what the executive yeah. committee's doing. Uh, we'll also, um, we're, um, well, Chris McVeigh and I are. We're building a structure to begin discussions on articles of agreement. So the impression, there was a general feeling in the executive committee that we're going to merge. So we're, we're going to establish a framework to begin talks on two to three, maybe four articles of agreement. Just because this all happens, we'll find out about this the end of November, beginning of December. And if it is to merge and we've done nothing, we're in, we're you know, the state gives us the articles of agreement and we've got a month or two mm -hmm. to decide if to propose changes. So, so we want to pick the most contentious things. So the, well, the question tonight, uh, it, it's pretty yeah. clear we're going to move in this direction. We'll establish two or three or four committees. I'm thinking it's going to be three separate committees, each to work on an article of agreement. Um, so it's going to require. So, I'm sorry, maybe I lost you. Is this to talking to Twinfield? No, oh, this is Burke. because yeah. this is yeah. within yeah. our okay. So, okay. so, for instance, the the one I brought up, I said I, I think it would be prudent. I, I wasn't looking for more. I was looking for one that we should start having a discussion on articles of agreement around debt. Because in in mm -hmm. one of the meetings Janet was at, she suggested there were ways mm -hmm. that. Yeah we could potentially get a little creative around the debt. In the executive committee, it was uh, debt, governance, and there were one or two others that school, came up. School closure was the other. School closure were the four. Um, so the executive committees have all been asked to go back to, to the board meetings this month. And considering those three or, I mean, those four, or if there was another one, but debt, governance, school closure. The, the, yeah, I mean, it, what would the local boards like to yeah. are, say the most critical articles of agreement? The most critical and prioritized. So if we were going to work on one article of agreement, what would it be? If we were going to work on three, what would they be? And what would be our first choice, our second choice, and our third choice? So that I can bring that back to the executive committee to help frame um, what we're going to put in place. So I know I'm kind of monopolizing some time, but is there any thought be, yeah. on yeah. two or three articles and what would be the most important? I think that's what I've always thrown out through this whole thing. Yeah, but I don't think that's our concern necessarily. We yeah. already have I the think debt. It's, yeah, no, it's us, <laughs> but we're the ones that are blamed um, in the public as I, we don't want to pay East Montpelier's debt. Understood. Okay. I, I think, mm. at least for me, the most important would be governance and trying to bring, because we, <clears throat> there's a lot of people that have, are heavily invested in the other boards and know more mm -hmm. about the, the debt. And we already, like if, if we initiate the debt, we already are, who are seen as, you know, <coughs> sort of imposing this and bullying into that. So I, I, I think if, if we, I don't know how we we're going to structure that, but one thing that we talked through, the, at least through the 706B, and could help us with the community engagement and the local control and governance is to to look more in detail to a community to the to the councils that we were talking about having in school mm -hmm. to try I to think. get that buy-in. I think that we would. There were a lot of people really interested in that, and that could help move forward our governance. So structure. that's another fear of not having a voice. Yeah, if and, you're and one it's of something small important for for the schools and some other districts. It, well, and, uh, some and other people that have been involved in the Act 46 are now kind of going backwards to trying to create them because they see the need. Mm -hmm. So if we, but that's just my. I, I would that agree that governance, I mean, at the end of the day, this is a governance change. Yeah. So the thing in my mind that presents the most opportunity and danger 
is the governance change? What does the oversight look like? How do we preserve um, what we're doing in this building that we know works that may not be the same as some of the other schools in the district? How do we, um, how, and, and I understand that that's also a double-edged sword, right? If you make too much room for individuality, then you end up with one board, one budget, and everybody doing what they've been doing right along, <laughs> which may not always be best practice. Um, so designing that structure by which those decisions, whether they're curricular or operational, um, and making sure that um, the community has a clear understanding of how to engage their local folks, and, and all of those, I think, are really important pieces to this um, and, and I would assume that we we would be doing this parallel to talking to Twinfield in in two ways mm -hmm. if we would consolidate or if they would you know change the structure keep their own board you know like we can't like totally say we're just you know like giving them both options of depending on what well, depends this, on what our structure looks like yeah depending on where we end yeah, it's too early to suggest anything I would say on Twinfield. Mm -hmm. Twinfield is about beginning a discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I don't think, I, I, I don't mean to presume anything. It, it's about opening some communications. So there's no idea where that's going to go. Yeah, but what I mean is that opening that communication <clears throat> and giving them both possibilities, right? Because we don't know yet what, where are we going to end. Uh, understood. I think yeah. they understand that. Yeah. The, at the executive committee level, and Bill, you can chime in if, if you want to add. I think debt and school closure were the two big ones. Mm -hmm. And I think actually the of the executive committee members of which governance was a major concern for them, they expressed a bigger concern over school closure. Mm -hmm. I think what the executive committee was thinking is where, where where are the biggest pockets of resistance in the communities? Mm -hmm. And if if there could be, if the communities could see an article of agreement on debt that seemed fair, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then there are a lot of people who are opposed because of debt. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there are a lot of people who are opposed. You can hear it from some of the community members. Well, we don't want our school closed. They think mm -hmm. that's what's going to happen. So. Um, there are articles of agreement that address that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think governance was another one that was mm -hmm. discussed. Is anyone thinking other than those three? And can there be flexibility? I mean, do we, are we hard and fast that one of them is number one? I don't know. Yeah. I so all I'll say there on the list. governance, school closure, and debt were the three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, it would be that order, personally. Yeah, for me, too. Okay. I'll bring that forward. So the, th the basic thought is there'll be three subcommittees, if there's if all the other boards think three. We're going to have to be careful with that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you that. The boards, you've got... You're going into a heavy negotiations year. Yeah, and I said this to the executive. Uh, I know. They're, they're, we're going to have to stop doing some things. <clears throat> you Can't don't do have that. the board capacity, you don't have the support capacity, yeah, and the personnel that need to support it. And I think the executive committee understood that. I think so too, but I just want but to re echo that. This, is, mm -hmm. this has to be done. Yeah. Um, or we're going to be. So that's the executive committee input on at 46. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, unless you guys have questions. It's... In all this Act 46 in the state, has any school gone independent? Um, mm -hmm. As in pulled right out of the public school system, not no. independent of their district? No. Okay. And that's become harder since North Bend has been pulled out about five years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, it was. It was one of the news mm -hmm. people talking that the mm -hmm. school was going to go independent. They're already talking about it. And I just was curious if 
any had I hadn't seen any in any of this Act 46. I've seen where the Chittenden East South whatever it is where Huntington didn't join the mm -hmm. merge yeah, MM one, but no. I hadn't seen where a school proclaims that they are now an independent school. The last time that happened was North Bennington, and since that time, the legislators made it, has made it not impossible, but a lot harder to okay. do. It seems like it would. Be. And that was because yeah. of costs they didn't want to pay to the supervisory unit in yeah. Southwest Vermont. Okay. Moving on to 3.2 debrief board retreat. It was in part of your report too. <laughs> Did you hear that one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't mind just starting. Um, Bill and I had heard Nathan speak in the spring, um, and it was pretty clear early on that the, we felt this would be something great for all of you to hear. Um, so I was just curious. I have my own thoughts, and I had actually typed them all up and shared them with Bill, and he's like, just hold those. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I would, so I would love to hear your thoughts from the day we spent together. Personally, for me, professionally, not as a board member, it was really good. Yeah. Because in my, where I work, they keep talking about the DMG says, the DMG mm -hmm. says, and nobody has told me who the DMG is. <laughs> So I left there very educated as to this report and what's going on and let administrators in my area know perhaps you could have shared some of this information because the report was excellent mm -hmm. and his sharing of it was excellent. Mm -hmm. um, I, thought it, I thought it was very good. I, I felt the same way too. I got some input from other board members really that they have never heard this before and were really empowered by the by the information and really liked it. I feel like everybody asked really good questions mm -hmm. and I mean, there was no animosity. Yeah. Yeah. We're always saying and, let's use data to make decisions and do all this and he had data in Vermont, not just yeah. Yeah. in Colorado mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, and also recognize that there are some things that we are already doing, but that more needs to be mm -hmm. done across the, the schools, mm -hmm. so that we would all be in the same boat kind of together, so. I would, I would just, I thought it was good. I would just caution us that a lot of the good stuff he had to say likely means that there would be reductions mm -hmm. in other areas in our school. Mm -hmm. I heard a huge thing on core. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. we're going to do a good job on core, we're going to have mm -hmm. to free up some time and resources from non-core areas. Do less, do it better. So That's the message I'd like you to take away. Mm -hmm. And I've heard two boards actually talk about doing that and saying they finally have started to hear that what Floor, you remind me, I say all the time, which is you have to prioritize. And it's not just about prioritizing instruction. You have to prioritize the content areas. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you have to be willing to do that. And I know you get pressure from your community not to do that. But we have to guarantee something to the kids. Mm -hmm. What are uh, we willing to guarantee? I really liked the idea of a guarantee. Mm -hmm. uh, that was... that. It's, it's a very clear expectation yep. that we can set for every person that walks in the school. And in business, in other board interactions, every time something goes wrong, there's, an, a, there's missing expectations. There are expectations that were had that weren't met. It almost always comes back to that. So if we set really clearly out what your expectations as a student, teacher, parent are, um, then it's going to clearly guide what we do. It's going to clearly guide that work in terms of prioritizing. Um, and it's going to eliminate, a, well, it will reduce opportunity for 
expectations and not being met and misunderstandings because we've said very clearly this is what we are guaranteeing and then we have to do it well, and a beefed up yeah. after school program for yeah. a lot of the arts and sciences that are you know the stem kinds of things not that we wouldn't have that in school i'm not saying that <laughs> i'm just saying beefing up to complement the core instruction is important and having it available is important I, mean, I think we do a pretty good job of community connections and the fact that we have an after school program and we have opportunities but it needs to be more than child care. Child care. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. It needs to be something that needs to be more kids will sign up mm -hmm. because right. there is some have, because there's really learning. Child care. But, but, yes. But how is that funded? Because that's always yes. the question. Good question. Yeah. Community still, connections is already expensive. For me it takes me back <laughs> to what I said. That cannot be our priority. Mm -hmm. if we like what we heard there mm -hmm. it's core instruction is our priority yeah. and yes. if, if if some of the other areas fall by the wayside or don't get the time that would be very useful for them and very effective we we've only got limited time and resources and where are we going to spend it i will say board members at my group were amazed mm -hmm at how we operate because yeah. we started talking about prioritizing and they were like and i said well i said i'm probably the biggest offender and maybe <laughs> administrators don't like me but i said at our board we go don't bring a budget in over this and you can't touch these things and they're like what mm -hmm. and i said tier twos are our board baby you don't touch it and our administrators know if you've got to cut some money they're not cutting it from there mm -hmm. and then a discussion was then as a board member you need to back that up and when community members say well geez you know that's an important thing I'd hate to I don't want to see that go the board has to say we think it's important and we don't want to see it go but something's got to go and that's what's and going thing is because that's going. not our top priority right. and this is why it's not our top priority and we had that conversation not that long ago when we were at U32 and talking about schedule and science and, and social studies have right like we have already started that here um and also felt the pressure of we have all these slos that we need to so there's yeah. this yeah push in the it's definitely um not easy to figure out right and the other thing i you know and with talking that day with nate and our table we talked about yes if core instruction matters then that means that we're going to have our priorities right right so professional development and having that teacher be able to meet 90 percent or 80 percent of the student needs also means that we can work on integrating the curriculum so reading can be taught taught through you know social studies mm -hmm. and science and you know like mm -hmm. what the teachers have been finding that there's kids that not necessarily learn, learn reading through your regular you know right. grammar class but are really excited about science or you mm -hmm. know yeah. so yeah. So, so if we are going to really support our teachers, it doesn't totally mean that we're going to lose science and social studies, no. right? Mm -hmm. Because they're going to... There's something to read about. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. have to Not be able to... Not just words in isolation. There has to be right. some comprehension there. So what he said was differentiation in structure. Differentiating in structure. Yes. Yeah. Structure. Yes. Differentiate. Differentiation of instruction. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so math, you know, like what I, I was just discussing because Bill and I go around about this, about learning math through music and, you know, and it just like, you know, I, I feel like, yes, we're going to have to give up some things and maybe there's less time of others, but we have to be able to, knowing our, uh, how our kids' behavior is affected, some kids work better when they're, you know, learning in, so, in music. You know, so, so I'll say this really directly. Yeah. Please bring me the research that shows that because the meta-analysis from three different researchers that have done meta-analysis over multiple hundreds of studies has shown that a highly qualified teacher teaching the subject area is the most powerful thing you can have. So that's why I get the, that's why I support that the person teaching math needs to be the math teacher, the highly qualified. Doesn't mean they don't use music, but it's not the music teacher teaching math. It's not the art teacher teaching math. I, I, I don't mean that the art teacher or the music teacher are going to teach math, but mm -hmm. that there are certain concepts that you learn 
in uh, in music class that is to the that advantage supports, of this. Yeah. That supports it's the math. It reinforces support. the math, so it opens up. And there, there, there's kids that don't sit through the math class, but it sit through the music class and can do it. So, and, and I yeah, hear so it is a saying, balance. Is is it in, a, in aggregate, yeah. if you want math to be learned, yeah. you have a highly qualified math teacher teaching it. Yeah. No question, yes. And there's times that you'll have to take that instruction from other places. Well, and that's, he made clear that the instructor needs to, to be a qualified instructor, instructor. Yeah. and not someone else yeah. mm -hmm. in the classroom. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure we have people who have the content knowledge and the background to teach. I came away at the risk of sounding a little self-congratulatory about what we do here, <laughs> feeling really good about what happens at this school. Thank you. And in, in talking with some of the other board members from other schools, um, you know, he was talking about these best practices, and I kept like, yep, we, we're doing that, or we're piloting that, or we're pretty far down that road. So um, not to say that we have it all figured out. I'm not saying that. but. Um, but it really, it, it was sort of validating that all of these things that we've been talking about and, and anguishing over sometimes yeah. because it really does come down to um, where do we put the resources. Um, it, it, for me, it felt good to see some really hard research and numbers that supported that um, what, what we're seeing so uh, that was that was one of my big takeaways Stephen can you share what you share with us at our other meeting one of you one of the members in your in your table said that you would have oh, changed your opinion the, one of the opponents of Act 46 said if they had had this presentation mm -hmm. three years ago it might have mm -hmm. yeah, colored the, their oh, approach okay. differently mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a question about the so highly qualified instructors mm -hmm. for the same math. Uh, yeah. Because straight through our school we have teach you know, multi subject area teachers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you talking about I mean I know that the conversation has come up a couple of times, but are you talking about needing to change that so that we have math teachers and So I'm not gonna be particular about the structure. I have a opinion on that. But to be a highly qualified instructor of a content area, you probably need the equivalent of a master's degree. So if you're teaching four content areas, you need four master's degrees. Which isn't realistic. No. <laughs> I took she what said he, it, not me. I know. <laughs> but I took what he was saying was a reduction in paraeducators providing instruction for the special in schools. For the special education. But I, I'm saying for But I mean for one, everyone. We used to have them for, doing reading interventions for, in the... Years for tier one, and if you look at the results of East Montpelier, your literacy is close to 75 to 80 percent proficient. Pick your measure. Mm -hmm. You're not there in math. Mm -hmm. You have a ways yeah, to go. Mm -hmm. And that's no attribute, that's no criticism of any instructor here. The problem is in the American education system, to get a certificate to teach elementary education you might have had one course in algebra at the college level. Mm -hmm. the, the method, all, the, not even the, take the pedagogy off for a minute and just the content knowledge that went along with the amount of literacy work, it, it's, it's night and day. So we're already putting ourselves behind. So when you ask my opinion about what I think is best, I would go for specialization as low as you want to go because we need to then provide a lot of training to our teachers in that. And when teachers have made leaps and bounds when they've been able to focus. Mm -hmm. it's, to me, it's, it's about the kids, it's about the school, it's about the teachers, it's all about focus. The more things you try to do, the less in depth you go. And that's been a criticism of the US education system for years when we look at it against other nations. We go, we try to generalize way too much and we try to do way too much. And if you look at the countries that have, you know, it's about your priorities and where you put your resources and effort. 
And then my other question would be a statistic that maybe you know or don't know uh, for programs, maybe not here, but like at the E32 level, uh, are there programs that you would see potentially eliminating or that keep kids in school so, because that's... So you know, a colleague of mine about 10 years ago said something when they were just becoming a principal and they were in a district that um, had some severe needs that was really want, um, had a lot of parents um, wanting kids to have many different experiences. And he said to them, he told me the story, so I don't know who he really said it to, but I liked what he said. He said, I want your kids to have lots of experiences, but if they're not literate and numerate, literate by third grade, numerate by fourth grade, I just took away a whole bunch of experiences because of the remediation that will have to happen throughout their K-12 career. So I'd rather give that up earlier on so I can expand their opportunities later on. He's an, he's an elementary principal. And that's the way I think about it. I, I'm right there with Floor and wanting to have kids multiple, multiple, multiple. But once we get past and we start to get that divergence of where kids need to be and where they're performing, mm -hmm. the time to catch up is about at least two to one, if not three to one. And every year we go, the gap gets further. So if we don't close it early on, we take away learning opportunities and experiences and choices that kids can have later. And that's what I worry yeah. about. So right, I'd rather- It's basically debt that you're incurring. To it, 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 there's, a huge, mm -hmm. there's a huge interest rate on it. The interest right. rate. There's yeah. a huge interest rate. So <laughs> to say maybe there won't be opportunities at the elementary school, I'd rather say it then than when I have to tell a middle school student, listen, you're gonna lose one or two electives, probably two. And then at high school, we don't have many electives you can take because we need to remediate so much just to get you to graduate. And short of graduation, I don't, the report, there was just a report out, public TV or public radio, I think is where I heard it. But I, I've heard the data other places. If you're not literate within your grade level, and I think it's it's either third or fourth third grade, grade, third grade, then it, you're, it, you're very lucky so I can, if you get any success. It's not saying you don't graduate from high school, but to be successful at all is very unlikely. So I can't give you the general population because I've been doing a lot of writing on equity in African Americans in the past six months. For an African American boy not to be literate by the end of third grade, they have a one in three chance of graduating from high school. And by literate, you mean? On grade level. On grade level. At third grade, they have a one in three chance of graduating from high school in the United States. So how can we, you know, we feel like we're kind of supporting the work of the leadership team and trying to be ambassadors. You need to put what it, can we You need to put it in policy it? across the SU that we are going to make these guarantees, just like Nate suggested, yeah. and that we are going to do everything we can, and that may mean not doing some other things to ensure that happens for every student. Right. And I would say numerate by fourth grade. Mm -hmm. Because right now, the highest correlation to earning potential is a student's math skill in the United States of any content area. It's not literacy. <laughs> it's kind of sober and sorry, but <laughs> no, it's it's all. It's, if we want to attack yeah. the it was a good counter it, to it, my it, yeah. It's self congratulatory so if, if we want, <laughs> Oh, I agree. So I was ticking off want, a lot we, of things that if we, we did. Wanna, if we want to attack the, 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 the um, equity gap, mm -hmm. this is what we do. Right. No, and I think... And, and I can tell you, that's been in my experience. In two other issues, we closed that equity gap. Yep. But we said there are two... We said those two goals right there. Yeah. Yep. And, and they didn't write a guarantee in policy. It was just, that's what we're doing. 
and yes, programs were stripped. Programs, some programs fell away. I, I, I mean, I understand, and I agree with what you're saying. I just struggled because I know, like, I know my kids will experience a lot of things outside of here, but I know there are kids that won't. And yeah. But they're going to experience a lot less if they're not living in New York. I know. So that's that's my plan. I, I understand you. what you're saying, and I. I, I feel the same way, and. Right. Board. No, we, what we want for all of the kids is different than what we can provide right. to all of the kids. And that's the piece for me personally, and it's a challenge for us as a board, is that the fiscal reality oh, is that what we would like to provide, we can't afford to provide. But we can control 9 to 3.30, how and much we make a difference. <laughs> for 180 days, and that's 9% of the kids' life during their their pre-K through 12 career. Yeah. So remember, we only have 9% yeah, of it during school. It's a short yeah. lever. It's if you short. go and do the math. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah, challenge. How do you even keep these numbers in your yeah. fits? Yeah. <laughs> I challenged that this, this spring in May, May and this, the, my instructor looked at me and goes, get at the board. And I did the math. He says 9%. Hmm. Well. Yeah. But I think as we counting no, as non waking hours too. <laughs> I'm thinking as we move towards budget, and we've got a little bit of time. But I, I liked the exercise that no one at our table liked. I like the exercise of what are we going to guarantee? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are we guaranteeing? Because yeah. if we say this is what we guarantee, that prioritizes everything. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No, that that is mm -hmm. the number one priority. And Cal's did that last week. They said, bring us a budget that guarantees literacy and numeracy to Kat and I. Kat and I were related, really. That's the first time we've heard that from them. I know I heard some Middlesex discussion around their, mm -hmm. treasured, their schedule. treasured mm -hmm. sugaring. And they started counting minutes and how much literacy and numeracy time was lost mm -hmm. doing that mm -hmm. event. Not suggesting one way or another, but it started no, getting them doing to an evaluation creatively look at. Mm -hmm. You're right. There's a cost for mm -hmm. any opportunity to like do that, something. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, right, and it's not always a fiscal cost. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's just it's a, a time cost, cost in the amount of time that you have to do other things. It's, uh, and I'll tell you, the, the example from the state where they're talking about mandatory, I, I won't get the term that states use, but diversity training. That takes time. So mm -hmm. something isn't going to get done if that's mandated as a standalone requirement. Something else will have to, right. there won't be time to do something else if that's done. And it helps if there's a guarantee from our board that we guarantee this be best across the SU, I think. But mm -hmm. this is what we guarantee. I mean, I would suggest the last two years we've guaranteed we're going to have as good a tier two system as we can have. That's been what our guarantee is. We're going to, that program is going to exist and stay. Mm -hmm. and, but hand in hand with the professional driver. development. <laughs> hmm? Hand in hand with professional development because right. always mm -hmm. right. doesn't work. Yeah. And, so and what we're driving well at first in the instruction. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what we're driving at, even though we haven't explicitly laid it out, is we're trying to get the kids literate and numerate. We just haven't said explicitly that right we've been coming at it from the you've been achievement coming at, you've been, you've been coming, no you've been coming at it from the means you haven't guaranteed the outcome yet right yeah but we're still working on how we're going to monitor that outcome too like we are so so i think if we if we the way you were saying you know get one at least one guarantee that we want if we want that to have everything it would be just that it would be that core instruction, the tier one, that would have everything else under it or not? No, I think you say the things you want students to achieve. Mm -hmm. I don't think you talk about, How to tell me it. if I'm wrong, maybe it is the board's role, you know, but it, if you don't put the student outcome somewhere in there, mm -hmm. you're missing the goal. 
smart goals always have a measurable piece. Yep. Yeah, and I don't mean to like micromanage what happens, but if we're gonna, we have to put the money in to support the teachers in order to have the outcomes that we want, right? So. Well, we're in a pretty good place with with that staff professionals providing and professional yeah. time and shifting if we make a, people if we make a guarantee then we need to do what we need to do to provide that guarantee and that mm -hmm. provides that includes staffing and financially supporting it and structurally supporting it and building support it, it requires everything that needs to get done to support that guarantee you don't have to say, well, and we're going to do professional development. We're going to do everything it takes to make that guarantee. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. It's because it's a hard goal. It's, it's, there's no wishy-washy. Yeah. There's no, um, and this may be a bad example. It's just something off the top of my head. If, if we're suggesting that music is a way that you can improve numeracy, then there will be specific lessons taught in music about math. It won't be a trickle-down effect. It'll be, they'll teach fractions when they're, when they're going right. over time There's signatures. Reason, no. But it won't be time <laughs> signatures, it'll be fractions. And they'll do fraction work in music. And they'll, they'll do work on that. And it'll be mandated that that, that area does it. No, I mean, no, we're sense. saying that we're going to guarantee something. So we're going to guarantee yeah, proficiency in math. <laughs> it, that's our focus. Mm -hmm. And everyone's all in. And it doesn't matter if you're the librarian or the custodian or the, or the PE teacher. All, everyone in the school is going to be working hand in hand on improving math skills of the students in East Montpelier. And it doesn't have to be that. Right. But if we're going to make a guarantee, it's all I'm in. Meeting that guarantee, it's all in, right? With something that we're using to measure it, not just feels like they know their numbers. Well, I mean, we're doing pretty reasonable. The, the, the yeah. system, the system is there. Yeah, the system so, is there. and we know that we're not making, like, we know we're not doing it right now, right? Um, so. So reading by third grade and math by fourth grade, or is that what we're saying? I'd say during. During. Right, this is, this is numerate <laughs> at grade level. Numerate. In fourth grade mm -hmm. and literate at grade level. I think what you say in is third that grade. you say numerate and literate. Tasks the leadership team to define what that is. Okay. And say, we want to know that it's pretty, it's not hard to do. Mm -hmm. We're going to come back as a leadership team and say, this is what we define numerate as, this is what we define literate as. And then you're going to see uh, evidence of that. And you can decide as a board whether you accept or reject that evidence. Okay. Because if you try to get too far down in the weeds, right. you're going to pull we're going to be here forever. No. It's a simple statement. It's and, and we're not professionals at this. Right. So I, uh, I would prefer that we, one of us, is. But, <laughs> but I am definitely not. So that's I, I feel like our our job. And I know we've talked about this. Sort of to set the pen. So if this is the pen, and we want to define exactly what the pen is, I think that's that makes sense. Um, so I'll ask if that's because the next step would be to develop a budget around that. Um, and I mean, it sounds like we've got a reasonable consensus on that, but um, I also don't want to make assumptions that are are not um, that are not reflective of what we're thinking. Um, I'm comfortable with it. I, I like the idea. I, the research is very clear to me. Um, what we've heard from Nate, what we've seen in our own school, that this is the core function of a public education at, at primary level, right? Because everything builds on this. And if you don't have this solid, 
then you're, you know, then you have educational debt. And it's, I mean, we've seen it over and over and over again. I've seen it in my own kids. I've seen it in other kids where trying to backfill is really, really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And as an education system, it's really expensive. So uh, if we can catch them early and get them up to speed, then we're doing better by the kids and we're doing better mm -hmm. by that we're doing better in our role as fiscal stewards as well. So I would advise you that you should, you've had a good discussion on this, that as Chair Rubin, you should think or talk with the board some more right now about warning something. I'm not sure if it's a policy statement or if it's a resolution mm -hmm. or a goal that you want to add to your board goals of we want to make this guarantee. The strongest way to make the guarantee is have it adopted into policy of all those different options I just gave you. And that you as a board should decide whether you want to invite other boards to take that with you or you'd like to be leaders in that. I think there, there are a couple it different... It sounds like there's at least one other board who's yeah. Yeah, I think thinking more. pretty strongly I think about more, this. Right? So. Um, I think we should try to do it together. So I bring think it the makes more a people lot of sense to not better. do it in parallel. So you can decide how you want to, you know, you've had the reflection, most, most of the boards are having reflection on the retreat, and it might be something that you send a communication to your fellow board members saying, or through Stephen to the executive board to say, we would like to talk about how do we have this discussion at the supervisory union level. What boards have met since then? Uh, Berlin and Callis. Okay. Do so, you have a preference as to whether we filter this through the executive committee or if... Should it be a discussion at the carousel? Should, Seems like a logical place to have it, doesn't Seems it? Seems like that way. You have all the boards there. It could be with a limited amount of time that you take back to your individual ones, mm -hmm. but for everyone to hear the same thing. So maybe the carousel. first ask is whether Good the executive committee would be willing to put that on the agenda mm -hmm. for that the next carousel. And if the answer comes back as, as no, we don't have time, or, or we don't want to do that, or whatever, we um, then we can Plan B. <laughs> grassroots a little bit. Mm -hmm. That seems like having everybody in the same room makes sense. So I would make a suggestion, and if that's the goal, you outreach to all the board chairs on the mm -hmm. side to say this is what East Montpelier is thinking. Our rep to the executive committee is going to bring it up. Um, but if, if, it's a, if it's a guarantee, and if it's a guarantee across the SU, then it no, no longer becomes a question of, is there time in a carousel meeting? Right. Something will be cut mm -hmm. from the carousel meeting. Very important, but it'll be cut, and time will be f found to do this. Makes sense. And then from the executive committee and from the board SU board chair, it, it becomes pretty clear. Okay, that's my own district school boards chairs have communicated that this is a big priority and we want to deal with it. Yep. And time will be found. I think floor for the other area for that is school quality mm -hmm. discussion on the 27th, yeah. which is the Monday before the Different SU board. Yeah. And just one one next step for us as a school, I shared the um, Nathan's article research report um, with the special educators here and asked them to read it. We meet once a month, and our first meeting is early September, um, so that to bring a level of awareness to them and just start having the conversation here as a school. Where do they see us fitting into this, and what? You know, one example, and I think I brought it up that day, was 
Yes, we have reteach and we have interventions for tier two at a separate time from core instruction, but our tier three services don't necessarily do that right now. We don't have a reteach block for tier three IEP services, which is another piece that came from that report. It shouldn't be a child gets their IEP services during literacy for literacy because they're still missing half mm -hmm. the instruction or whatever. So that's a that is a conversation that the special educators here and I will be having yep. is just starting to think about. So what does that mean for us? Awesome. Okay, I will email the other board chairs in the morning. Mm -hmm. See where we go with that. Anything else on the board retreat? And thank you. That was, mm -hmm. that was I great. think, a really productive discussion and tangible work product from that retreat, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. On to 3.3 trauma. Ruben, you and I, we couldn't, re the three of us couldn't remember why we had it on there, but it came off minutes and haven't been able to really figure out. Uh, I think oh, that's because, because Brian brought up during the retreat yeah. the screening, which was it's tomorrow, it's it's tomorrow, tomorrow oh, no, it's Thursday, Thursday, it's Thursday. Thursday. Oh. It's Thursday of resilience. Yeah, yeah. and Kelly's and working on a date right now. We had talked about whether it made sense right. to piggyback with the capstone presentation of this um, so Kelly's putting together I know she's asked mm -hmm. the rest of our colleagues to say you know what's the calendar at the schools so there are three or four dates so we picked the end of September beginning of October yeah like we've narrowed it down I think yeah. it has been September that. 17th I didn't mm -hmm. stay on it so I just let it I ignored Sorry. those emails and said Kelly will tell me when she has a date like an evening type thing yeah, yeah. it's an evening to, to view it and then have round tables mm -hmm. discuss it so I'll, I'll preface this comment with saying that I can't dedicate my entire Thursday to the capstone screaming, screening of trauma. Um, but one of the things that jumped out at me over and over again during the retreat um, is the, is the difference between what we do in public education and what and part of it is that i'm chair of capstone community action and so i see the work that we do there up, up not close but from at least a policy perspective um, and head start does wraparound services for the families mm -hmm. and what that means is they take these trauma measurements and all of these other things um, and they understand that you can't stabilize a child in 9% of the day. It's not possible. And you actually have to stabilize the family. Um, and that is something that we, it's completely outside of our orbit in public education, which means that it's like putting Band-Aids on an arterial bleed. You know, we're, we're not getting at the root of what's going on with these children that are walking in the door every day. So going back to why I preface this with saying that I can't go to this on Thursday, I think that there is tremendous value in um, more crossover in some way between these two parallel systems. Mm -hmm. um, because the Head Start system gets at the kids who come from highly traumatized and difficult backgrounds um, and tries very hard um, with pretty decent success to stabilize them so that when they walk in our doors here, mm -hmm. um, that they're ready to learn. And, um, and it's just, it's something that, that keeps standing out to me, yeah. which is that we have traumatized families mm -hmm. and that's what's walking in the door every day. It's not just traumatized kids. These are families that are living in crisis all day, every day. And, uh, I know we can't solve this here. This has to come from, uh, ultimately this has to come from our communities saying enough is enough. Um, and we're prepared to do something different than what we're doing right now. Um, and when or if that will happen, I don't know. But 
Um, it's just one of those things that keeps standing out to me um, to, uh, in terms of, uh, I don't know where to go with that. So but. I will tell you that the place to go to that, for me, it's at the state level. Yeah. Because the AHS and AOE yeah. are constantly in battle with each other. Yeah. And they're battling over the same dollars. And that's what it's yeah. really about. Mm -hmm. So until... And the policies cause them to be in And the balance. policies and cause them yeah. to be in balance. I'm not just yeah. talking about 166. There's yeah. plenty of other mm -hmm. instances mm -hmm. of that. So until that, until that's forced to be solved, and we're not the only state that has that issue there, I hear about it from our other New England colleagues, mm -hmm. but until we really solve that issue, it's going to be a fight for what's left of money. Yeah. And that's the, one of the problems with the system we have. Yeah. Right. It's just, it, it, it so is. I, yeah, there's And so I think you make, you make, you try to make inroads wherever you can, yeah. little by little. Um, as of right now, that viewing is at U32 mm -hmm. on the evening of September 17th. But we'll get announcements out. Yeah. Okay. I believe we are on to board <coughs> number three. And I think for us, yeah. it's beginning to move towards bullet two if we're trying to yeah. stay on task. Public for their input on the <laughs> bullet number two. Probably a good way to get I, to I, I think it's a major yes. problem because I don't think, even within boards, there's agreement on what community engagement is and yeah. what it means. And I would tell you from listening to another board, I would advise you not to talk about how to do it. Yeah, there's they can go down to a wormhole. <laughs> Just what it is. Just what it is. What it is, yeah. Yeah. Because even at the State Board of Education, they asked that question and said, did you really have a good community engagement? And, you know, soon enough, there were some people standing up saying, I sure, you know, not completely respectful that they are engaged. So. So I think we, we have something that we have to continue to... Right. To does it mean physical presence? Does it, what does it mean? Yeah, I, I think we, we have to do that exercise that we talked about doing last year. Again, you're really taking stock of what we do across all our boards. What, you know, what, you know, or how do we, everybody I, use I would go with basic floor. Is community engagement getting the community to our board meetings? Or is it finding out from the community what they want the board to do? Or is it asking the community on their own to begin to do work and prioritize stuff? Well, I, I, I think we need a little bit of both, but we want the community engaged separately from us, right? That's what we've been Not learning. Not attending a meeting. No, attending a meeting. That's what we've been learning in the different community engagement seminars that some of us have attended. and. Too many. We need the, the community, which is part of the reason I'm thinking that those community councils are incredibly important to talk about in governance because that's completely separate and has nothing. But you have to have to a do purpose with. for the engagement. To what like, purpose? If you have a PTA or a PTO or a PTNO or any of those, the purpose is supporting your child's school, whether yeah. it's fundraising yeah. or whatever, and those people gather to run those things. That's engagement and. Yeah has a purpose. Right. You've got to give people but a reason. But coming to a meeting that's yeah. Yeah, yeah. like this, I so, mean, I don't know. It seems like the only time we have community physical engagement is the budget is rocky. We're right. cutting uh, something that people have yeah. emotions about. Yeah. Um, but. So one of the reflections that I had, because I had a conversation, and I can't remember for the life of me, the community member who is uh, one of a group of folks who actually watches the orca videos pretty <laughs> <Religiously>. much <laughs> yeah. all the time. So one of the things that I realized is that we have no metrics at all for 
how many people watch these videos. Mm -hmm. We may have a lot more community engagement than we realize because we've never actually looked so to can see I what the ask views you again are. What I started. Being, yes. What, what? What is, is it? Right. Don't well, don't tell me how you do it. No, no. no I tell I'm, me what you mean by it. Why? Yeah. Or Lindy started to go there. Why? Yeah. But but what do you mean by it when you say the words without using the word the community or engagement? But to me, community engagement is more about if we want change to happen in our schools, we need to have our families engage and the broader community engage to you know, support the budget and support the work that is going on. But what's the, the change? That depends. So, I mean, like the school starting in time, that got a lot of engagement when people thought it was going to rock their world with when you drop off kids or not. Those are the kinds of things, and I don't know that that's community engagement. I well, Floor, to hear what you said, I wouldn't say that's community engagement. I'd say that's community support. Yeah, and, it and it is what we mean by community engagement is that we want the support of the community on things the board's doing. I think for a lot of people, community engagement means involvement. Mm -hmm. They want the or input. They yeah. want input from the community on this topic or this topic um, and I, I, I think the direction we need to go from our board is to say this is what we mean when we say community engagement and no matter what what that is I, I, I use the input example that you know um, in, in community engagement means to us that um, we receive input from at least 50% of the community on our proposed budget. And that's what we mean by engagement. We hear from the community on things that we're interested in. But Floor, if you think of the training we went to, it's got nothing to do with that. From that perspective, community engagement has nothing to do with the school board. Nothing. The community decides what they're going to be engaged about. And I have to say, as a community, when this school, and it doesn't matter what it is, has anything, <laughs> yeah. it is the engagement of the community is incredible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the I Love East Montpelier lunch, and we have firefighters, and you know, Edie and Mary Miller, and there. people yeah. who have no connection to the school whatsoever come religiously every year, or mm -hmm. it's any sort of a public gathering. And it's historic. You're it's never, always been that way. This hundreds yeah. of people come every time. The road is full. And, mm -hmm. and when I think of this community and their engagement, I would say it's an incredibly engaged community. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, so, from our perspective, does community engagement mean attendance at school events? Is that what we mean board, by or school? Board. I mean, that's what you have to you have to decide as a board. Yes. This is your definition. Mm -hmm. So because if you look at the stuff that comes from public access. It's not necessarily about the board. If you look at the best research, the best practice research, it's not necessarily about a board or an authority figure doing it. Mm -hmm. you know, so you have to decide that, and you have to decide what you mean by that. You mean it's fine if you say we want it to be something with the board, but you need to make that determine. And what are you really? And where Lindy was going? Why are you doing it? What are you trying to do? But I think especially because we're going to be involved in some sort of Fact 46 again, right? And whatever that, whatever, whatever that is. And, you know, Essex and, you know, Kim sits in the VSBA board with me. You know, it's a, it is separate from the board. There's still, you know, one board member that takes part of, of the meetings. But it's, it's again, it's just creating engagement around what was going on in, uh, in Act 46. And... You know, Actually, what, what Essex was doing was more about what their vision and mission was after they merged. Yeah. So, so. why? Why do they have education? Mm -hmm. Why do they have the school system? That's what they were really looking at. Yeah. So, so I'll use the survey as an example that I don't consider community engagement because I felt like I still, even though we edited the questions, mm -hmm. I still felt that they were a little bit leading. and. For our community specifically, like if you ask our community, do you want to share debt? Do you want to share our debt with somebody else? Who would say no? I mean, 
you know, so, but our question, they didn't, they said, no, I don't want to share debt. Well, it's because you don't realize that some of our debt would leave, potentially, right? So I don't think the, I feel like the communities, the education of the subject matter matters. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's a give and take from, I want to hear their opinions and what they've heard from out other sources and give them what we're seeing. So to me, that's what it is. It's the give and take of hearing from them, hearing what they've heard, hear, uh, hearing how they feel about it, giving our perspective and having that back and forth conversation. But I, I think we, we have to start somewhere, right? So we have several opportunities right now and we could start as for now, just create an input while we get at something more advanced like what Essex has been, it's been doing, but we could start in, you know, like what we're going to do in September 17, and the boards will watch the trauma. We, we talked about there are several community members that have been, you know, that we could let that lose. There are several members of the community that are already interested in so, helping. So that's a how and a what, but it's not a why. But again, right? because that will support the work that we're doing. Or, or is that in core instruction? So what not we're everybody. looking for, again, it's, is what we're really looking for is community support rather than engagement. But, but right? if you don't have and, an engaged and, community, you're not going to have but their I think, support. But I think that our, without, without uh, getting into the weeds of that, I think we, we, I think by some measures we have very engaged community. Mm -hmm. By this particular measure, which we, it's very personal to us, every month, right? Nobody comes. And so the fear is that people don't know what we're doing. Um, and uh, I'm less, I don't feel that fear as um, acutely, I guess. Um, so it goes back to, because, because this community has a, a strong history of if we do something that they disagree with, they're instantly engaged, right? So, so, so we know that if we do something wrong, we've got an engaged community. And so it really, again, it sort of it's, goes back to the why, what is it that we're looking for? See, I'm not so sure I agree with, depends on if you do something wrong. It depends on whose opinion that it's wrong, right? I mean, and that's where I'm str I think the community engagement is important because coming in late to the Act 46 conversation, I hadn't really actually done much research to it. Mm -hmm. I hadn't really engaged with any of you on it. I, thinking about it, I, you know, like on my own, I had my opinions. I talked to a couple people after I got elected and had, but I don't know if, the, I don't think there was enough in, uh, engagement I didn't to know if the community supported our stance or not. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's, I don't think we're looking for community support. I want, I mean, it's a little catch-22, right? Because they're electing us to, to represent them, right? <laughs> so they must think we have like minds if they're electing us, right? <laughs> Well, they don't but, or at least they trust <laughs> well, know, exactly. Well, that's what I'm saying, right? That's why I'm using air quotes. Yeah. But I think we do need to find a way to get the feedback based on educated conversation or and not just throw out a survey feeler and, and get, because it's totally so how it's written. There's a trust that the being run around. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, and we've had. So I don't know that it's just. I don't. And I mean, my definition of support isn't what I'm looking for when I say community engagement. Mm -hmm. I want a back and forth conversation. Yeah. And without trying to go around and around, if we are going to try to pass some policy, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Right now, uh, there's going to be some sacrifices, right? That we don't want them all showing up, like when we lost Spanish or we lost English. Right. So no, we want to make sure that we. So, have so a that is an opportunity with, yes. that we have right now. Like we know that you know, 
literate and numerate is important and, and this so is what so I, I think we have to start somewhere I'm not saying that's the but to me that's an obvious we don't want this to be pushed back when so we present an a budget why want, yes right that's what I was getting at earlier yeah. like the what and the how need to have a why behind it and Bill has been waiting so patiently <laughs> <laughs> so I think you need to talk about two different definitions mm -hmm. here in this discussion and I think if I were in Alicia's chair, I'd be worried about school engagement. And by almost every measure I can think of, not just for East Montpelier, but in Washington Central, you have high degrees of school engagement. Mm -hmm. Very high degrees. Um, and at, in all the six schools within Washington Central, some of the highest I've seen. So I don't think you need to worry about that. You need to define what the difference is between community engagement and school engagement. Mm -hmm. And I think about this a lot because when I'm thinking when we're Act 46 and public come out, what I try to ask myself is how many people in the audience are parents mm -hmm. and how many are non-parents? Well, look at we our town meeting the parents. as well. It's the same. It's, yeah. the, same. it's the same. So yeah. here's, the, and, and there's myriad of reasons that you could go into why that is. Um, if you said something, Lindy, about change. So if you want people to change, you're not going to get them with the how and the what. I've tried many times myself and failed every time I do it. It's how do you get to the why. And just talking the piece about numeric and literate, until the education is provided on why literacy and numeracy are so important, people aren't going to back that guarantee. Mm -hmm. Because there's thing I think you're taking away from my child for those extra experiences. So you have to show the statistics. For me, I'm a numbers guy. As Alicia says to me, she goes, I don't know how you hold those numbers, but I can't hold letters in my head, but I can hold numbers in my head. So I remember things like 9%. But those that's the work if you want to make change is how do you get people pulled into the change process mm -hmm. and every time we started with a how and the what and we've gotten technical in Washington Central for my past six years we usually haven't done a good job then when we said so what are the possibilities or why would we want to do this so maybe the why um, is we want community engagement as guidance when we're considering policy change. Maybe that's a starting point. Maybe. Yeah. Right, because then we, when we start talking about the how and the what, we have a reference point that we can go back to. Say we gathered this input we gave these opportunities for input and and maybe that you know um, maybe as a starting point that's uh, maybe that is one so that when we're considering policy change we make sure that we give opportunity for that we make opportunity um, for community engagement and then we can decide what that looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's whatever it is, open forums, it's a, right. Because, because the other thing that's sort of lurking in the back of my mind, I don't know if it's in anybody else's, but generally speaking, in budget forums, unless it's a really contentious budget here, there's only a small handful mm -hmm. of folks here. So even when we're asking for, um, you know, controversy is what gets people here. and. One of the things that a good board tries really hard to do is keep controversy to a minimum. Controversy and turmoil tend to be something that boards avoid uh, for good reason, yeah. right? You know, if, if something's gotten controversial, it often is because there have been missed opportunities or expectations met, not met along the way. Um, I think a good example of the first impression if somebody's coming to a board meeting is there's a problem 
when Krista or somehow we were copied that Tammy would be here tonight. I didn't First know who question. Tammy was. Who's Tammy? Didn't right. say anything about note taking. <laughs> and I was the agenda. I'm looking at the agenda to see if there's yeah. something yeah. That I'm here something that I didn't uh, know about. Yep. Because the answer was, I'll be there. Thank you, Krista. I'll be there. I thought, oh, is this a parent? Is this right. what, what are we discussing? Didn't know. <laughs> Well, I think Ruben suggested a pretty clear, a pretty clear cut definition of what we might mean by community engagement. And as he suggested it's a start, a starting point. I don't know if you wrote it down or can remember it to say it again. It was something around informing us when there's a policy change. Or yeah. some sort, or so we wanted input from input. the community on policy changes. That's what that's what we're seeking when we say when we talk about community engagement, what it means is we're seeking input from the community on and policy is lack of a better term, but it, it could the policy could mean any different thing. But. Right, because we don't necessarily want to have community engagement every time that we do a reading on a whatever policy, so we'll definitely want to. I mean, I look at that guarantee, that, and I think that's what you were talking about, Ruben. It's more like goals. Cool. Mm -hmm. What are the goals and aims of the board? We'd like some engagement on that. Are we have yeah. the mm -hmm. right goals. It's directional input, right? Right. It's making sure that when we make some sort of a course change, this is in the back. This is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Like, if our hand is on the tiller and we're gonna, all right, we're gonna move this we're three degrees to we the right. We are making the change. We're considering. We're, the we're considering changing course to this direction over here. How does the community feel about that? Mm -hmm. Right, because that is exactly in, just to beat this analogy to death, the wheelhouse of what a board that's a governing board is supposed to do. We, we set the long-term direction. We're not down in the engine room shoveling coal. Mm -hmm. We're not doing any of that stuff. We're deciding as a group what direction it is that we're going and what we're sort of aiming at. And so we wanna make sure that we don't make big decisions like that in a vacuum, right? And that's kind of the ultimate driver in, in my summarization of this conversation. Um, and so then we want to make sure that we give opportunity for community feedback for when we make when we're considering uh, those changes. And something like this guarantee is an obvious <laughs> yeah. an I, obvious yeah. opportunity to ask for that input. So well, could we simplify? Would say, oh, okay, okay. Okay. But could we simplify the language for if we're going to attract the broader community? to something that we had talked about. I was just going through the notes of other meetings of, it, we, we had said engagement, parent and family engagement with student, for student achievement. Because if we say policy, they, mm -hmm. you it's know, too most, bland. it's too, yeah. you know, most of the people that are gonna be even watching the, the video are not gonna know necessarily what that policy is, right? Unless we spell it out, like we were saying, so do we want them just in, well, I guess it could be any policy. So is this a broader concept? Sorry to be back and forth. No, I'm just trying to think. I, I think our definition is an internal definition. It's not outward facing. Okay. Community doesn't need to know our definition. But to me, and if that's the direction we go, and I would be comfortable, it now defines what it is we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So if it's to get community input, then, and all the boards agreed on the same thing, because that still has to happen, then it allows us to focus our efforts on, okay, what are some new and creative ways we can do that? If we want more community input, we know forums and board meetings isn't getting it done. Mm -hmm. So what other things do we explore? What kind of professional development do boards need to improve? increase the amount of input we receive from the community on things. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to look backwards a little bit, you know, if, if we had, if we had sort of set this definition for ourselves a couple few years ago, we might have gathered input about 
the tier two supports. Because um, that was not a huge directional change, but that was a directional change. And in my mind, that might be something that would you know, cross the threshold of, you know, maybe it's worth getting some community mm -hmm. input on this. Um, and it's an opportunity to educate the community on why we're considering this. Right? I would say, no, it's not. If no. it's to gather input, it's to gather input. Yeah. That's yeah, what we, we want. We want to hear what they say. It's got nothing to do with educate them. No, no. I do have to <laughs> It's hot, you know, one of the things I feel like is my role, take the tier two, it's my role to educate families, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. About very what that much. is, because it will be very hard for them and something that that term tier two would mean nothing to them to give you input on if they right. knew nothing about yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. not your role, but I do feel like it is somebody's Fair. role to educate. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think. Uh, taking us out of the role of educators on every level is probably a good idea. <laughs> no, I actually disagree with you on that. But <laughs> I actually disagree with you on that, Ruben. I think it is your job as board members to educate your community. It doesn't mean yeah. you do it by yourselves, mm -hmm. yeah. but I, you are the representatives of the community. You have a two-way communication. Uh, I Right. I guess I... I maybe in a more formal and you have done that we have you yeah. know yes. you have been educated mm -hmm. on topics that uh, you probably uh, never thought you'd be educated mm -hmm. on that yeah. you are yeah. now able to speak of mm -hmm. to your community no that's yeah. a fair point yeah so so we're gonna get it trained or input which is what you were asking you know we you know we we do want that and i think all of the boards need more information and similar things that we attend, you and I attended that other day to decide, you know, if we're going to be asking, we went through all of this before when we were trying to do it for F46, like to decide if we want to be more proactive of what we do that day. If one day is discussing and connecting or if it's just merely input. So try to differentiate and really understand what level of community engagement because we we can never really get people over it like people get frustrated with us if they come and we have a ready made that you know like yeah. we always got the right. input from you like agenda, from different yeah. people or the agenda so so we need to relearn that you know we've talked a lot about about it in other frames but what are we you know are we doing small group like there's a lot to be learned and to try to follow through so the question is, do we want to learn more? Uh, yes. And well, I mean, if we look at what this goal outlines, Ruben will get together with the other board chairs and Matthew, and they'll come up with a written purpose and strategy. So what is it we want Ruben to carry to that meeting? Kind of what he outlined as mm -hmm. input mm -hmm. on. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. we so I, I don't think there's anything else. We don't even spend any more time thinking about it. We're, otherwise we're gonna, the chairs will get together and a decision will be made and whether we like, you know, either we're going to support the direction that the group wants or we're going to go our own way. Hopefully we support the direction the group wants and it might not be what we want. And then, th then we start getting into the weeds on what it's going to be. I, mean, I guess I... I Maybe I'm not quite understanding what you're, but I want to make sure that there is, from my perspective, and I'll support you guys if you don't disagree, but if you do disagree, sorry. Um, but I do think there needs to be not just input, but back and forth. Mm -hmm. Like, I think if somebody comes in and has an opinion about something, and we need to be able to communicate that back to them because maybe their understanding of something is not what our intention is or so I don't think it's I just want to make sure it's not just a one-way street yeah and that's what they will you know my understanding is that's what we will define and we would learn more about you know clean engagement thick engagement and what how we want to do it and it will change depending on the issue right it doesn't mean that there's just going to be one way to do it Keep looking at Stephen. Well, that's why I, I yeah. just what Stephen's comment was earlier yeah. was that if we're just getting input, we're just getting input. I, I don't, from my perspective, I want, 
I would prefer to say back and forth at some point. Well, back and forth could be an important thing, but it doesn't mean it's part of community engagement. It, community engagement is going to go its own way. It doesn't mean we, we can't encourage what you're interested in. I, I, I mean, I would disagree. I think the worst thing we can do is have a back and forth between one community member and the board. I'm not saying like, like a confrontational. I'm just saying if somebody comes in and says, you know, you painted the wall green, and I say, well, no, no you're not actually glued to me. <laughs> no, uh, you know, I, I'm just, I, I feel like we need to be able to. Well, I think it's informing. If right. they come and say, I understand this is being considered, I'd like more information. If it's not on our agenda. Then we say, we need to look into that, and it'll be on our agenda next month, and Bring your friends or whatever. I don't know because I don't know what it is. I don't know if that's community engagement or if that's just. I, I guess it is. Well, I guess it's always depending on how we frame the conversation, how yeah. we frame that community engagement. Right. And by saying community engagement doesn't mean that it has to be and one I, I way or another. I think we're getting a little lost in the how and what. Yes. I that. think we figured yeah. out for at least in broad strokes the why. We, I think we've got sort of what it, why it is that we would want community engagement. So For I will. Information both directions. I will bring that to the other board chairs. And thank you for a robust discussion of board goal number three. Um, I believe that we are on to the administration report to the board. So um, I did not do my homework. I get to say that um, there's supposed to be a written report in here for myself. So I'll let Alicia go first and then tell you about some of the. She included some of what I was going to talk about, and I'll fill in the rest. No, that's my name? colleagues at Central Office. Yeah. That okay. doesn't have my name on it. There's no superintendent. You can't just like sign your name yeah. at the bottom of that. I could, but yeah. you know. But that was appreciated. That was really good to see what went on in the summer. And I think that was very yeah. informative. It was great. It was great. Very and I, I actually, not having it here, I feel like I spent as much, if not more, time at Berlin Summer Program. Um, and and it was a it was a wonderful experience. It really was. Well, you had a lot of your staff members working it. Yeah, a lot. Nice. Yeah, a lot of staff members, um, and some I sent. So I was the acting administrator mm -hmm. um, for a period of time there, and realized pretty quickly we were short staffed, and sent out a plea to my staff, and it was incredible how many of them stepped up and said, "Sure, we'll come in, we'll work." Um, very proud mom, I have to say. So one of the four U32 students was my daughter, and she had an incredible experience. And she worked with Mrs. Gannon, so of course it was a great experience for her. But So I was able to see it both as administrator and as a parent whose child was working the program. Um, what, what was really nice, and I don't want to say I don't want it here again, but I will say the setup of Berlin with the library in the middle and the classrooms mm -hmm. having it very contained. This is a long, sprawling building and it's hard to contain anything. Um, that seemed to work very well this year. Mm -hmm. um, so that was great. And having a new principal there, Erin did a fabulous job of just, you know, letting the troops come in and take over the school. <laughs> um, one thing I didn't provide to you, and I apologize, and I will email it to you this week. I wanted to give you a numbers update. Mm -hmm. Karen and I, we had two students register as late as this afternoon, so it's like really constantly changing. We haven't had many move out, um, but we have slightly smaller kindergarten classes, and we have quite a few Act 166 pre-K students coming here from other places, which is great. We have students from Montpelier, Berlin, Berry City, um, because our numbers were down a little so we could take on some, some students. But I will email those to you. I okay. told Karen before she, she left today in the midst of, midst of in-service, let's connect and so I can get updated numbers. So but one of the things I've been promising every board, I know everyone's anxious, 
We won't give them to you till after the fifth day of school. Mm. They're just too variable. They're very every day it's changing. So mm-hmm. until until we get to the Tuesday of after Labor Day. So but we I should really, know I that until she said, but you'll get them. Mm-hmm. Our um the pre K that's not Jamie, like the all day pre K. I don't know. I can't, it's not true. Is it no, no, that's the community so connection. The community yes. connection. The one that's in the building. Yes. And that will take people from anywhere. Is that correct? Or yes. do they have to be East Monday? No. Okay. And we have been taking kids from all over. Okay. Um, I, I don't know how many of our schools offer it, but I know a number of our schools don't offer mm-hmm. it. So we have been taking in well, can, just one. There's only one that doesn't do all that. Real sex. Um, so we have taken kids from other schools. Maybe this year it's different, but we've taken kids from other mm-hmm. schools for the past few years mm-hmm. to provide. Or on the off days. Um, so we provide five day a week, full day. And, and maybe that's what they don't do. So even on the days where they come, they can spend the full day here. Um, which is an attraction and why I feel like we've gotten more calls this mm-hmm. summer than other years because the word is out that we offer this service. What well, was a person who lives in Montpelier and I were at a meeting and she said, I was considering that and I said, you know, you could do that. Yeah. And then we talked and I said, go for it if it works. We do. Oh, and we've had, we have parents from other districts who come and drop their kids off mm-hmm. in the morning and pick them up at the end of the day. And I think, I don't remember that kid, but it's because they're not a, he's not a player student, mm-hmm. but they are here for CC. So I will get those numbers to you. Um, I just, it's, it is constantly changing. Smaller kindergarten classes, you said? Right now we have two classes of 14. So not not significantly not smaller, but last year we had large. We had a class of 17 and a class of 18, which was pretty big for kindergarten. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, but not smaller small. than you were yeah. in, in anticipated? <laughs> But no. small, just smaller than last year. Yes. Okay. For yeah. preschool or for kindergarten? For kindergarten. This year's kindergarten, kindergarten yeah. is a little bit is smaller than last, last year's year. kindergarten. You get the cutest kindergarten. I know. <laughs> yeah. I do. <laughs> Miss Samantha's coming up. I don't know if there were any other questions. So we had an a awesome day today. We had everybody here, including we had community connections people, um, kitchen staff. Everybody came. We did a... Um, we have quite a few new staff members, so some ice breaking, getting to know you, but a lot of work around the implementation plan and just a review of where we've been, where we're going, um, working on our agreements as a staff and our commitments norm setting. Um, we did some work around PBIS and just getting on the same page and planning for that. A long day, but it was it was a great kickoff to the a, a long week of in service. Um, I know you read in a couple different places about the World Peace game that was held here. Mm-hmm. That was a great week. Um, some of the other, uh, there's been project-based learning professional development that's happened with 9th, 10th grade teams at U32. We've had our usual responsive classroom and restorative practice training. Um, and all our new staff were here all of last week, pretty much. Uh, the elementary teachers from Wednesday on because they had responsive classroom a couple weeks ahead of time and the 7 through 12 teachers. We're here Monday and Tuesday for restorative practices and Wednesday through probably expanded to three days, which still isn't enough time to do everything that needs to be done with new staff. So they were drinking from a fire hose, especially on Friday. (laughs) They had it when I saw them um, that morning. The other thing, um, we had a a great, and it's been alluded to in a couple places here, but curriculum camp uh, again at the end of school. Or some really whittling down of performance indicators and standards. The standards have stayed steady, but the performance indicators really getting whittled down. So, in some cases, going from 60 to 18 in yeah. literacy to really try to get refined. And what does that mean to be proficient mm-hmm. at that grade level? So, those are some of the great things I was going to talk about is just all the great PD that's been done this summer. Um, we're also in the midst of hiring for an information technology director mm-hmm. or coordinator, I should say. And we're in the midst of that process for Washington Central, and uh, we're almost a full staff across the district, but not quite everywhere. If you read the digger the past couple of days, there's been talks about the teacher shortage. It's definitely true. Mm-hmm. 
and principals and administrator shortages are even more yes. acute. Yeah. So. My wife will offer some insights on why there's administrative shortages yeah. <laughs> amongst in, in, I'll be quiet. But thank you for the update. It was great, and yeah. it was nice to see the letter that was sent to the family too, especially since yeah, my kids won't be in school less and anymore. Less I was like, even yeah. have children. <laughs> so, so it was good that you yeah. sent it because we were not and, getting it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I haven't sent out the email; just been too busy. But I'll try to send it out tonight. I know most folks; it's too late to, to invite people to their in service tomorrow. But we'll be filming that, and it'll be up on YouTube for you to see both the. Um, beginning of the opening of in-service, but also Dave Mel Melnick's talk for tomorrow. So we're streaming that on YouTube, and uh, we'll have it stored up there for if you'd like to take a look at that. It's at 8, right, tomorrow? It's 8.30, it starts, and we're going till noon. I believe we are on to the fiscal report. Um, so this is the final report from last fiscal year. The auditors were in last week, and it's pretty much, um, I mean, I can answer any questions, but I know all of you know how to read these enough, really just a little bit more income. Um, E-rate missed the end of the final year. That's why you see a down on E-rate, but that will come. It's just missed the June 30th cutoff for last year. Uh, some of the changeovers from Sovereignet to First Light have been affecting that. Um, we'll get that money. And then... You'll see that there were some savings in special education costs and then just closed down with the school. So you have a pretty healthy fund balance along with the self with the set asides that you have a board has taken for the health insurance recapture that was uh, you did a year ago based on what the legislature had done to try to capture some of the re health care recost and what you've reserved for technology and uh, retirement expenses. So you're you're at a good place at four point eight percent or one hundred eighty two thousand dollars. Alrighty. I'm glad to take any questions. I went did that really quick, but you've seen pretty much saw this in June as well. You will see next month um, all of the changes from all the spring hiring. Oh, thank you. Um, the numbers look very good. Oh, good. Um, but we did a lot of hiring in the spring. So that's all that Lori, Bill, and I met last week, and it's all getting rolled up. So you'll see those numbers next month. Great. Executive committee? Is it I think I covered it. Right, well, I'll add one thing because policy committee is coming up. I, I think what the executive mm -hmm. committee said to the, will, will be carried to the policy committee is we, Trust and respect what the policy committee is doing, and yeah. you you tell us what the priorities are and where you want to go. Is that kind of fair assessment? You think, Bill? I think so. We didn't. I mean, we just didn't mm -hmm. feel like we could provide specific guidance on do this or do that. Mm -hmm. There's some discussions about policy in general at the executive committee level, but yeah. not necessarily work that the committee's doing. Policy committee. So I will tell you that these binders, um, we were able to take some fund balance money that was left at the end of the year in supervisory union and hire someone to come in and organize all <laughs> the child. And it's <laughs> not child. in your policy, but in some of the board policy, it's the requirement of the superintendent to do this. So we did it across all the boards. I would ask your encouragement to help change that because I think we did a lot of printing that maybe we shouldn't have done. Mm -hmm. But I was, and if you could help your policy committee member express that. I, and I will add that I think that came from that meeting that I shared wasn't maybe the mm -hmm. most pleasant meeting mm -hmm. um, of people wanting paper <laughs> in a binder of stuff that is not even necessarily current policies and um, the discussion at that meeting but this is the result of it I think um, so we have it now 
but I think it is something we need to address and talk about whether or not any going forward this is a necessary expense or I personally would encourage you to mm -hmm. bring that back to the policy mm -hmm. that we find this unnecessary <laughs> and these are well, no. Washington Central and East Montpelier are all in one book mm -hmm. so each school got a different one with their right. policies and and WCSU. WCSU. And the, I think the charge of the policy committee is to try to get us on the same page. And we're, we've made good progress, I think, because most policy or a lot mm -hmm. of the policy is mandated. Mm -hmm. And the language is provided through the um, school board association. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's already been vetted through the attorneys. And I personally trust that. I mean, we read it and check it out to yep. make sure that our culture or whatever isn't that different so that's what how I've been kind of trying to give my voice in the policy meetings because I thought our board pretty much agrees with I just I just wanted to temper your statement to, to me this is crucial it just Agreed. should be an electronic form yes. it shouldn't be in a paper form yes, yes. and it I should be a very yes. clear yes. site at EMES and it yeah. And, SU and, U32. and you will notice that the board pages, the board web pages, have all been redone both on policy and on your board resources. So that all the board resources, on the board resource page, you have a table that has the agenda, the packet, the minutes, and the ORCA recording. Mm -hmm. All Excellent. in one row for each meeting. And then you'll see Great. another web page that the policies, and they may not be totally finished at this point, but they're getting close cool. yeah and I think you know for those folks who prefer a piece of paper I don't think we want to shame them no no they can so make their I think own we binder. can put a, or if they don't have the resources to print out 250 pages then they could come to WCSU and get uh, you and know for five cents a page they can right. get one <laughs> right yeah. okay um, start, uh, start time committee. So they're meeting the last, they're trying to set a meeting for the last week in August. Oh, Not me. Okay. It happens. They're trying to start a meeting for when? They're trying to set a meeting for the last week in August. That's pretty soon. Yeah, I can't remember which of the two days, otherwise I'd okay. say the day. I just know there's two different dates. Okay. There. Did I miss an email somewhere? No, I think it's been really Karen and Scott having okay. that conversation. <laughs> okay, then. You can talk to okay. Do I have to? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no? Uh, okay. Um, yeah, from my perspective, as the, one of the school start time committee members, nothing has happened since the carousel that we okay. <laughs> that we reported out to you all on. Um, school quality committee. Yeah. You had the minutes there on mm -hmm. page 24. It doesn't show like I attended, but it does show that I'm asking questions, so I need to change that. But other than that, we. It, that we were supposed to, we were supposed to meet September twentieth, but we are talking about meeting sooner than that. No, that September. Right? That's September. Okay. That's September meeting. Yeah. Whatever so, the date is, I have to okay. look at my. Okay. I thought you had said something about August, and I was just like, yeah. oh my God, August no. Yeah. No, I meant to say September. If I didn't say it, I meant September. So, so we're we've been you know asking several questions. We took all the data that was given to us in October. We talked about this at our last meeting, and we went in depth and asked more questions. We're going to try to get a preliminary report from Bill in uh, September, right, Bill? In October? <laughs> uh, preliminary so, report for? For reviewing, for monitoring. So. Yeah, Kari and I are meeting in the early in the month to try to plan out. What that is. What that is. Yeah. So, so we, we, we're continuing to try to narrow down what is it that we, how, how do we are more effective at monitoring and then taking into account our, you know, that goal in 
that we have, uh, the three goals that we have, we had, uh, we talked about, you know, what is the data, what do we want in a show, you know, and having less information instead of more information so that we could get at the point. So there's sometimes in the year that we want more, but sometimes that we just really want to narrow it down. So it, it was at this last meeting, especially, we talked about a lot of different things. So it was not as organized as our previous meeting because we had a lot of discussion also on, you know, is the data showing us everything considering that we are looking at trauma and uh, in what we looked at in the, the, the behavior issues too and then what are we missing and then Bill gave us some good advice that we, we were still gonna, the data is still showing that if we're doing a good job of taking care of the behavioral issues. So I don't know if you want to add something, Bill. I, I think we pretty much just want to narrow down how we are monitoring right now so that we can really target and show that we're doing a good job. Especially we're going to have that policy in numeracy and literacy. <laughs> we're going to have to get yeah. to what is going to, what exactly do we want to see as a board that shows, that informs most that that is, how do we monitor that that's actually happening? And I don't think we have any specific, besides digging deep into the other data that was presented to us, we are working everything around those three common goals. Yeah, I mean, I said it's a, I think it's going to be a combination of the work we did with Nate yeah. and really staying focused on student outcomes yeah. and, and not necessarily how it gets done, just that we have to because we, every time we get that how, we forget the goal that we're trying. Not forget, but we take our eye off the measuring of the goal. Mm -hmm. So, and our job as boards is to monitor. Yeah. Right? So we want to figure the data. out, look at the data, and really understand what we're seeing, and what is the data showing us. So, yeah. but not in none of us have. You know, we all have. We're trying to. I think we're doing a good job. It's, it's a really fun group, and everybody's really trying to do their best at working together. And it's all, you know, I, like I said before, I think it's one of my favorite committees because you really get to talk about what's important. Negotiations committee. I have nothing to report. <laughs> There's some preliminary discussions between like the chairs of the negotiation. Is that how we would describe yeah, it? Yeah. Just some discussions on when things will start. And yeah. When's the current contract at? End of this year. And then legislation requires that we only have a one year contract after that. Again? The state mm -hmm. legislated in the Omnibus Bill on Act 11 that there is only one year allowed for the next negotiated agreement. They almost sunset. Oh, because uh, they want to do a help. Because of health insurance? Yep, mm -hmm. they all must sunset on July 1st, 2020. All right. So we'll and I am our rep, so if someone around. feels strongly that they would really like to be on the negotiating committee, they can, can talk to me. Order. Order. <laughs> Everybody's like, what? I mean, I want to, but I yeah, don't okay. want to. <laughs> you probably don't want me. <laughs> do you want to see it? Yeah, I do. we need to make the motion for the. Oh, is that what you want? Do to I, say? Can I do all three? Yes. Yeah. Sure. You have to give those big, big numbers. Yes, she will. She's oh, very my good at it. I'll make a motion to approve the board orders. Um, one for six hundred and seventy-eight thousand six hundred and sixteen dollars and fifty-seven cents. Do we need the date? <laughs> no. <laughs> we all what, we can, what we can do is just yeah. pass them over yes. after okay. we do yeah. it. And then she um, can just read them off. Second but. one would be for $2,342,678.11. And the third would be for $10,631.70. Get to stand up. Yeah, okay. Mm. Love here to do this more. Is there a million one if people are listening? Right. That's because. Special education. 
yeah. we pay it to yeah. the supervisor union so more interest can be made than on what it's costing us to borrow the money. Okay. I just think it's important that mm -hmm. when we're talking in the That's meetings. fine. Yeah. I'll wait to bring them back. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> and is there any discussion of the board orders? Yes, I did. All of those in favor of approving the board orders, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thanks. Um, that brings us to future agenda items. Anybody have anything? Uh, Act 36? No. We already have those there. Got its placeholder. There's its placeholder. Um, I think you have one about um, the guarantee of guarantee. Guarantee policy. Yeah. And board communication, I, I think, also related to the guarantee. I have a request in, is this a good time to say something? Sure. To, it, 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 to whoever has time to go to the regional meeting for Washington and Orange. It's going to happen on October 10th at the high school. They, Stephen has been a couple of times, I guess. So. The regional um, meeting of what? Of the Vermont School Boards Association. Oh, okay. So it's when your board members get voted and um, running for re-election. So I would appreciate if there's when people it? that actually can. <laughs> it, it's the October 10th at the high school. I think you have to sign up for it through the Vermont School Boards Association. Yeah. Because I think they do you, dinner, don't they? Yes, they Something. serve you dinner, yeah, dinner. and you, <laughs> you, you, you have oh, received God. an email, yeah. but it probably Food. went unread, but no. <laughs> you sent too many. <laughs> but yeah, what, it's what right on the website. October 10th. Is it's something. October 10th, which is always not a good day. I think it's birthday, but that day, day happens every year. I think I teach a course on Wednesday nights. Yeah. I'm not positive yet, but yeah. I think that's And I'm not saying everybody has to go, but it would be if we have the you know last year's meeting was pretty small I was not running last year the year before there were more people so there might be more people now that it's an election year but not likely and I do believe that that brings us to adjournment <laughs>